Watch you guys, got another video here for you. This is a Dell Optiplex 1070, and if you want to get into PC gaming, but you don't have a lot of money, then something like this you can pick up on eBay for a pretty cheap price. Now, as you can see, this is a very small form factor, and uh, these ship with uh, i3s, i5s, and i7s, and you can also upgrade uh, those as well. Now, you can also put memory in here up to 16 gigabytes or more, and uh, we'll be upgrading the memory, the graphics card, and also the hard drive to a solid state drive as well. And this will play all the latest games like uh, The Witcher, um, Fortnite, any sort of game like that, PUBG, it will play those games, and I'll show you how to upgrade the system uh, to get it working. Now, also, we'll be installing Windows 10, but you could uh, make a Hackintosh or whatever you want to do with this, like Linux on here if you wanted to. So once we've completed all our upgrades uh, for this computer, it will be able to play a lot of the games uh, that modern day computers can play. And also it will be uh, pretty uh, snappy for its age. Now one thing to take into account is when you're buying one of these, if you are, is try to get it as cheap as possible and uh, try to uh, get older memory as cheap as possible. The graphics card you might want to buy second hand, but this is a new one and it's going to cost you around about £150. But try and keep the cost down, otherwise the project won't be worth doing. Otherwise you might as well buy a Ryzen 3 and some memory and stuff like that. But we'll take a look at that a little bit later on. So let's remove the cover. Now one thing that you will notice is that this case is a small form factor, which means it has a very low uh, profile to it. So you're going to be limited to what sort of graphics cards you can put in here. Now I'm going to be putting a 1050 Ti inside here and that's probably going to be about its limit here. You can see the profile at the back of the case is pretty low. So uh, the Gigabyte 1050 Ti does come with an extra bracket which you can swap out. Now the power supply is a 250 watt power supply so it's going to have its limitations and you can see here it does have 17.5 amps on the 12 volt rail and uh, this card here does say it needs a 300 watt power supply but this system will run this 1050 tight and I'll show you that a little bit later on we'll do some benchmarking but it will work inside there but this is a low profile one and it will fit in the back of this uh, case here so which is really nice for Gigabyte to put in that extra bracket now underneath this uh, DVD ROM drive here you can see this has the big DVD ROM drive some of these come with a small slimline one with a hard drive underneath it but this one doesn't and this one has the hard drive on the left which allows you to put another hard drive in there as well now it's got four slots of DDR3 uh, memory inside here and I think this goes up to uh, 1600 uh, I think that's the max you can get on this uh, particular type of uh, memory so we're going to remove those and start to upgrade the memory first now these are two gig sticks inside here so I'm a bit disappointed that it does come with two gigs in each slot so I wanted to try to get one with four gigs in each slot uh, so it would allow me to go up to 16 gigabytes so what I'm going to do here is just replace two of these with two four gig sli uh, sticks that I've got so that would give us a total of 12 gigabytes but I will get another couple of sticks and make that 16 uh, it's just the way it works out sometimes so try to get match paired uh, memory as well if you can and this is all match paired uh, memory it's all Samsung memory with two gigabyte sticks each uh, in there already so I'll be changing some of those now you can get this memory in places like CEX in the UK but uh, Craigslist or anything like that eBay if you're living in the States or other places in the world uh, again you'll probably find this uh, pretty expensive so you need to look uh, around for a cheap deal now as you can see here uh, these are from pulled from an HP machine they're not brand new uh, but these are four gigs each so ideally you would want four gigs each in slot each slot which will give you a total of 16 gigabytes which will be plenty even eight gigabytes is going to be plenty for gaming on this uh, old machine here so let me just put these uh, into the system now these do have a little notch on them and you just have to line that little notch up here uh, onto the motherboard here and then just push it into the little groove, pull the little levers back and uh, push this in. You should hear a little click and then that should go into position there. Now this is not a tutorial on how to build a computer, basically it's just showing you how you can uh, upgrade this system but that should be ample of memory in there. Now we've got a graphics card in here, this has um, a Quadro 600 I think it is in here 
and we're going to be removing that and putting our 1050 uh, tie inside here now yeah, believe it or not that quadro uh, one gigabyte uh, card will still sell for 70 pounds uh, online so we're going to be putting in this 1050 uh, tie which is a much better option and this will play a lot of games so this is the overclock version and it will run perfectly fine in this system here so let's move on uh, to uh, updating our hard drive now solid state drives this is a 512 gigabyte solid state drive now the choice i've chose here is just the cheapest i could find and the reason for that is because there's no point uh, going all out on a system like this so i'm just going to put in here a cheap uh, ssd which you can uh, get online i will leave the link in the video description for you now i think these do have around about 550 uh, reads and around about 450 or 500 writes something like that i'll put the uh, information in the video description so you can see it or I'll try and post it up on the screen but this is going to be ample for what we need for this system and also it's going to give this computer a new lease of life and it will take the operating system from that old mechanical drive which will speed up boot up times and also help with just general um, you know multitasking around on the computer because we are now running this on an ssd which is going to improve it now again you can see here there is a, a big massive uh, dvd rom drive here you can remove these and change these out uh, with an actual uh, hard drive caddy and put extra storage inside here you can remove these the some of these models do come with a little slender slimline dvd rom drive with the hard drive underneath but you can replace it with one of these what you're seeing on the screen now and this will give you uh, a two and a half inch and also a three and a half inch uh, storage drive if you're not going to be using a dvd rom drive and it also gives you a couple of usb uh, 3.0 ports on the front as well which is just that added uh, extra bonus to upgrade it to a more modern type now some of these dell optiplex 7010s uh, do have to use uh, this particular type of caddy which you can get on ebay and they slot in this place here now this model is this slightly bigger version so it's not the smallest one and uh, it allows me to put the solid state drive with a three and a half inch drive in this area here but um, you may not be able to do that and you may have to use something like what I've got in my hand here which is going to allow you to put in a two and a half inch uh, solid state drive in there as well so just do your research and check it out make sure you're getting the right one so you, so you don't have to uh, mess around with that but if you do then it's going to cost you an extra tenner for one of those uh, hard drive uh, caddies that's going to allow you to upgrade this now obviously the a mechanical drive is great for storage but using it on this old system is going to be really sluggish and this uh, is going to bring it up to uh, speed and uh, give you a much more better user experience with this now you can clone the drive with something like this device here and what this will allow you to do is to plug this adapter into the solid state drive and then into a usb port and then you can clone the mechanical drive over to the solid state drive if you wanted to pretty straightforward stuff and uh, this will go into your solid state drive and then uh, this will uh, be able to copy that mechanical drive over to the solid state drive it's very easy to do but i'm going to be doing a fresh install on this system and uh, turn that mechanical drive into a storage device now hopefully um, we can uh, get this all working just right the way i want it and uh, again uh, we do have the dvd rom drive underneath here but sometimes there will be a slimline dvd rom drive in here with a drive underneath there which will need to be swapped out with one of those uh, hard drive caddies here now underneath this one this does allow me to put a, a solid state drive in and a three and a half inch drive which i'll show in a second but if you do have the other type you will need to use something like this and they're only at uh, 10 pounds anyway let's uh remove this uh, hard drive bay here and uh, unplug everything now sometimes you may need to split up here as well if you don't have enough um, power cable uh, but you can see here we do have space for uh, a ssd on the bottom uh, which is nice so that means i don't need to clone this across now i could just plug this in and just clone that straight across to there if i wanted to do that method I'm going to be doing the fresh install method but basically uh, 
I could just put in our SSD on the bottom which I will do now now just check your cables make sure you've got enough SATA ports on there and enough uh, power cables you can see there is a cable here with two power uh, cables on there so I can use those for the two drives and there is another another SATA port on the motherboard so I'll need to uh, do that so basically what we're going to do here is get our screwdriver and uh, screw this up onto the uh, caddy here you will need to get a couple of screws and you can pick these up um, on eBay and places like that but sometimes uh, you do get screws in these uh, SSD so I'm not sure what's in here let's have a look no there's no screws in here so you will need to get yourself uh, screws but most of the modern day stuff are toolless and that's probably why they don't uh, include this into uh, the kit here so this is the drive here a pretty nice drive as you can see here good price and this is a 512 gigabyte SSD which is going to be perfect for this uh, type of build and of course it's because it's not a, a well-known brand it's a, a pretty affordable price so it's going to be good enough for what we need here so I'm just going to quickly screw this in and uh, this is not going to take too long there's four screws here just uh, screw that up I'll speed this process up for you and that's this bit done and all I need to do here now is finish this off and then put the cables on here now if you don't have enough power you will need to use a splitter uh, but this does have two on here and I'll be able to uh, reverse that around so that should be fine and that will be on the same rail so that's okay so we'll just use that here so I'm just going to uh, get these cables and uh, offer these up so I'm just going to plug this SATA cable in I have to have a spare SATA cable here just plug that into the board now I'm going to be changing the mechanical drive over to a white uh, SATA port on here and putting the SSD into the blue uh, SATA port which is going to now uh, have the Windows 10 installed onto it so that's what I'm going to be doing here now if you're cloning uh, your system you will need to just leave it as it is uh, temporarily and then swap them around once you've cloned it okay so I'm just going to quickly change this over here and plug in all the cables before I put it into the actual uh, slot there because it's going to be very difficult because the cables are quite short so let me just quickly uh, rotate this around and get this plugged in there we go and there is another one in here which I might be able to just squeeze on here if not I'll have to use a splitter and this sometimes can be a bit fiddly so just need to get the uh, cable connector around the other way you need to spin it around but if you find this too difficult then just get yourself a splitter it's not that much of a big deal uh, but I managed to try to push this in I've got this round the wrong way I think so I'm just going to flip this around the other side so I just need to turn this uh, around the other way I think it's not going in this way oh there we go it's in and then we just need to plug in the uh, SATA cable here and I do like the Dell builds they seem to uh, design their cases <laughs> so they really are compact now this part down here these are the SATA ports and I'll get a close up here so you can see the blue one now is where the old mechanical drive used to be I'm putting the solid state drive into that one and now I'm going to put in the mechanical drive into the other white uh, SATA port there and there's another one which contains the uh, DVD ROM or Blu-ray and we also have a 3.0 uh, port there as well so let's talk about the uh, graphics card and the power supply here uh, for our project so we've got a 1050 tie going in and this power supply will support up to 250 watts maximum now why would you want to do a project like this uh, there's many reasons why uh, maybe you want to set up a Linux operating system and this will be great for Linux uh, also maybe a gaming system and you're on a tight budget 1050 tie will play a lot of the modern day games and you'll get 60 to 70 frames on a lot of those games Grand Theft Auto 5 Fortnite PUBG Counter-Strike Source, uh, uh, Witcher 3, it'll play all those games so unless you're not expecting super high frame rates like 150-200 frame rate then this system is ideal and of course uh, this graphics card is very affordable and it's a good all-round graphics card for those types of systems 
and it's a low profile uh, graphics card which will fit lovely into this case now one thing you've got to remember when you're buying this is keep the costs down because obviously if this starts getting into hundreds and hundreds of pounds then obviously it's not a viable project and you may as well build yourself a new computer and if you spec something out you can get a Ryzen 3 and some memory and a cheap motherboard and also a case and power supply and away you go you will need to put a graphics card in there of course but you could buy something cheap so let's take a look at the power supply this may be something that people worried about is it enough power and you've got 17 point five amps on the rail 12 volt rail and also 5 volt rail as 15 amps and 3.3 as the 7 amps on there so there's plenty of power there to drive this uh, graphics card it doesn't need any more power to it it takes a maximum of 250 watts so that should be fine for what we need to do here it's not going to catch fire or anything like that it should be fine but always check with uh, the specs of what you're trying to do here obviously it's going to have its limitations so to get the graphics card in we will need to remove a couple of slats at the back and this is a simple case of just pulling this lever up and this will uh, remove the uh, back slats here and we just remove those and offer up our graphics card now this graphics card believe it or not does still sell for about 70 80 pounds on Amazon it's a quadro 600 and uh, this was already in here so I'm not sure what I'll do with it it's one gigabyte of uh, quadro 600 but uh, obviously it's great for small uh, form factor type computers it's not it's not going to be good for gaming or anything like that it's going to have its restrictions but it's good enough for people that just want to surf the web and do stuff like that so if you're that sort of thing that you're looking at then you don't need to buy a graphics card like this you can buy a lower end graphics card uh, if you're not looking to play all the games so do your research if you've got any questions you can always pop on the forum and i'll do my best to help you out there so you can see this is a, a four gigabyte uh, version and it's overclocked whereas that other card is only a one gigabyte version a uh, big big difference okay so what we're going to do here is get this out of its packaging now if you've never uh, seen or heard of a 1050 tie before they've been around for a while and they're an awesome little affordable card to get you into pc gaming and it will play all of your games uh, with ease no problem at all and you'll get really good graphics on there as well so let's take a look at it there it is there and it's got the wrong bracket on here so don't panic this is the wrong size uh, bracket but they do give you another bracket in here which is really good of uh, gigabyte and this is probably the best uh, low profile graphics card for these types of uh, computers whether it be a HP um, a Dell machine these are great uh, for these types of projects now you're not going to get any back plate or any super uh, high frame rates on this it's just going to do what you want it to do which is play games and uh, that's about it so let's put that down there and uh, we can get out the other bracket which is inside here and it does come with the drivers and the user manual but we don't need to use that because we can install a graphics card so there we go and I'd get the drivers from uh, their website they're going to be the latest and greatest drivers so let's go ahead and uh, remove the bracket so we're going to need to remove a couple of scr uh, screws maybe two or three screws here and a couple of bolts as you can see here uh, so there's three screws on here so I just need to get a screwdriver to remove those and a couple of bolts here to remove uh, that bracket and we can replace this little bracket on there which is ideal now this all comes with the same price and the same kit and uh, you won't need any more power to drive this uh, graphics card so this is ex ideal for what we need here now if you do run into problems guys don't forget you can flash the BIOS and sometimes this can resolve a lot of issues with hardware and stuff like that because these are older systems and flashing for the very latest BIOS they have on their website is a good way to uh, start with this type of project so I'm just going to get this little screwdriver set out here and uh, remove these screws and we can then replace that um, bracket on here so if you're looking to get into something like this or maybe want to tamper with computers and get used to working with computers buying uh, older stuff like this is a great way of getting familiar with uh, this type of stuff and if you want to get into computer repair and stuff like that buying old broken stuff and try to repair it is a great way of learning so uh, always check uh, eBay out for those and uh, read your 
descriptions on eBay because some of them have been already refurbished and you don't want those. You want to get the ones that haven't been refurbished so you get all the benefits uh, from that computer. You'll be able to uh, refurbish it yourself. Now I need to remove these nuts here so I'm just going to get a little socket set to remove those, little 5 mil, something like that. There we go. And this will be able to remove uh, those bolts there. Now again, uh, as I said, if once you start a project like this, uh, you look for more things that you can do. Any sort of computer can be brought up to the modern day uh, within reason. Now you are going to get uh, limitations with old systems like this, so bear that in mind. So now while I'm finishing it off, if you're interested in what CPU it is, it's an i5-3550. It's an Ivy Bridge, uh, which was released in 2012, has a socket of 1155, got four cores and four threads. You can see DDR3 1333 up to 1600, 3.7 gigahertz turbo and uh, six meg cache. And uh, so not too bad. And this is the CPUs that it will support and maybe upgrade to if you wanted to try and do that. Uh, so you can see here, this is my chip here. And uh, I'm not gonna bother with the upgrade of the CPU. So let's move on back to the installation of our graphics card. So we can remove this out the way now. We've got our plate on there and you make sure you're installing it into the blue uh, 3.0 uh, PCI Express uh, port there to get the maximum speed for the graphics card. So I'm just gonna slot this in. Now it needs to go underneath that little uh, bar there uh, to get this installed correctly. And if you're using a slightly smaller form factor case, which there is a slightly smaller one here, you may find it a little bit more trickier to get that in. Just pull the lever over and that's it. We're installed there and we're ready to go. So you can see there's a bit of a gap there. There's enough for a 3.0 or 3.1 USB card to be put in there if I wanted to. So let me just show you the other versions you've got. You've got the USFF, which is the ultra small form factor. That will not accept a 1050 tie in there, so don't buy that one. The SFF will accept a 1050 uh, tie. Uh, mine is the DT version, which will obviously accept it, but you can see that uh, difference in size there. So both of the SFF and the DT will accept those, and the MT, you can put even bigger graphics cards in in that machine as well and change out the power supply and if you want to see that video let me know in the comments section below but you can see here the gap here so if you had the SFF version that gap would not be there and your graphics card will be right up against uh, the power supply so bear that in mind but it will still work but it does block that intake area there a little bit so just bear that in mind if you are buying uh, one of these particular types of um, Dell Optiplex uh, 7010s. So let's move on to putting the cover back on and I'll put the cover back on and then we can get a Windows installed. I'm not going to bore you with that part um, so I'm just going to put that on but if you do want to see any more of this sort of content let me know in the comments section and I'll do those for you. You can see here the benchmarks with the mechanical drive that's with Windows 10 on it. You can see how slow it was. It was really slow. I mean Look at that, 1.340, that's terrible. Uh, it's just unusable. And also the uh, the 1.290.0 uh, is really slow as well. So I will put the solid state in and I will show you the difference that that's gonna make to this system. And there you go, right there. So that is the solid state drive with Windows 10 on it and it works a treat, it really does. And with that uh, memory, once I get that little bit of extra memory in there to get to 16 gigabytes, that should be just enough to do what I want to do. Um, and I'm going to put this in my workshop, I think. Uh, but yeah, there you go, the, the benchmark here. I'll just run a quick benchmark here and I'll show you some gameplay on it in another video. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments section below and tell me what games you want to see me try with this computer. So if you're on a tight budget and you don't want to spend vast amounts of money on building a computer, then getting something like this is still serviceable. You can still buy computers like this and run some games on it and have some fun, you know. And for the money, it's not cost me a lot of money to get this uh, running. Now if you check this one out on eBay, as you can see here, this is a refurbished one. You can see it's the smaller version than the one I've got. And also, he's not upgrading the memory. It's got four gigabytes of memory, 250 gigabytes hard drive. So he's probably just cleaned it out and he's just doing a quick flip on it to try and make some money. And I think it's probably a bit too much. But if you check out some of these other ones here, 
you can see uh, that the uh, pricing for these is pretty good you can bid on these and get them pretty cheap they may be knocked about a bit and a bit dirty so just pick the ones that look in pretty good order you can see this one's 37 pounds at the moment and that's an i3 with uh, 8 gigabytes of ram with windows 7 pro which you can upgrade to windows 10 and you can check the generations of uh, cpus just make sure you get the best one you can possibly get for the money obviously the higher the generation the more the price that will cost for that particular uh, build. Now, if you want to upgrade memory, it's going to cost you around about £20 for 8 gigabytes, so that's two 4 gigabyte sticks. You can also try out sites like CEX for cheap deals as well. So I'll let the benchmark finish off and we can get the end results. If you want to see some uh, gameplay, then let me know in the uh, comments section below what you want to see, and I'll try and test this out to let you see whether it's a viable project for you. Uh, it's a very affordable project, I think, for a lot of people that are on a tight budget. And I'll give it a full thumbs up because I think it's been pretty uh, worth doing. As you can see, the frame rates are 70.1. That's the overall frame rate. So you can see um, average frame rate there, the minimum and maximum. Maximum frame rate, 148.3, which isn't too shabby. Anyway, my name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.